Let's listen to John Purefoy and Pamela Stewart's evocative chamber work, Lamentations of the Lamb. This work brings Old Testament prophecy and New Testament fulfillment together. Written in a contemplative style, this thoughtful offering is well suited for Holy Week observances as believers reflect on the last days of Christ's life and ministry. Inspired by the classic Tenebrae service, Let's listen to this extraordinary new offering. It was two days before Passover, and the chief priests plotted to arrest Jesus in some sly way and kill him. Then one of the disciples, the one named Judas, went to them and asked, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they gave him thirty silver coins. I hear many whispering, Fear is on every side. My enemies conspire together against me and plot to take my life. O Lord, my days pass as swiftly as the evening shadows. Do not let me die before my life is even half spent. The evening of Passover, Jesus gathered with the disciples to celebrate the feast. While they were eating, he said to them, I have eagerly desired to share this feast with you before I suffer, yet one of you will betray me this very night. When the disciples began to question which of them it might be, Jesus replied, It is the one who dips bread into the bowl with me. Taking the bread, 
he gave thanks and broke it. As he gave it to the disciples, he said, This is my body given for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, This is my blood which is poured out for many. Drink it in remembrance of me. Afterward, he took a piece of bread and gave it to Judas with these words, What you are about to do, do quickly. As soon as Judas took the bread, he went out, and it was night. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion who I trusted, the one who shared my bread has turned against me. Lord, truly, I am your servant. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of all your people and will lift up the cup of salvation.
After the meal, they went to a place called Gethsemane. As they were walking, Jesus said to them, This night they will strike the shepherd, and you will all fall away. But Peter insisted, Even if everyone else leaves you, I will not. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth today, even this very night, you will disown me three times before the rooster crows. When they arrived at Gethsemane, Jesus asked them to wait while he prayed. He took Peter, James, and John with him and said, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow. Stay here and watch with me. Going a little farther, he prayed, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken from me. Yet if I must drink it, may your will be done. Three times he prayed, and each time he returned to find the disciples sleeping. Waking them for the last time, Jesus said, Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. As he was speaking, Judas appeared along with a crowd of armed men. Walking up to him, Judas said, Teacher, and kissed him on the cheek. The men took hold of Jesus to arrest him, and as they led him away, the disciples fled in fear. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you. Those who hate me outnumber the hairs on my head. I am in torment within. My eyes fail from weeping, and my heart is poured out on the ground. Hear me. Free me from the trap that has been set. Lord, my spirit fails. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Show me the way I should go, for I trust my life to you. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God and my life is in your hands.
They took Jesus before the high priest, where he was questioned, and many witnesses testified against him. Now Peter had followed them and waited in the courtyard. Aren't you one of his disciples? a servant girl asked. But he denied it. Then another saw him and said, You are not one of the disciples, are you? Peter denied it again. Finally, a servant of the high priest said, Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Peter swore at him and said, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Peter remembered the words of Jesus and wept bitterly. The chief priests decided to put Jesus to death, and the guards took him and beat him. Very early in the morning, they handed him over to Pilate, the governor. It was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner of the crowd's choosing, so Pilate took Jesus before them and asked, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? The crowd shouted, No, give us Barabbas. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in a rebellion. Then Pilate had Jesus whipped and beaten. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Pilate returned with Jesus, who was still wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. He said, I find no case against this man. As soon as they saw Jesus, the people began to shout, Crucify! Crucify! Wanting to appease them, Pilate handed him over for crucifixion. The watchmen have found me. They bruise me. They take away my cloak. I offer my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I do not hide my face from mocking and spitting. I am the object of scorn to my accusers. Alas, the daylight is fading, and the shadows of evening grow long. Do not turn me over to the desire of my enemies, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence, like a lamb led to slaughter, like a sheep before its shears. I am silent. By judgment I am taken away, yet who of my generation has protested?
the soldiers led Jesus to a place called Golgotha, where they crucified him with two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Then they divided his clothes and cast lots for them. All who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads. Come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the earth. In the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And after he had cried out again, he died. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? They pierce my hands and feet. I am despised by the people. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see, is there any suffering like mine? Lord, do not hide your face from your servant. You know how I am disgraced and shamed. Scorn has broken my heart and left me helpless. I look for sympathy, but there is none. For comforters, but I find none. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. As evening approached, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple, but secretly, 
because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he took the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in his own new tomb. Then he rolled a large stone across its entrance. Look on me, the one you have pierced, and mourn for me as one mourns for an only child. Death wrapped its chain around me. The flood of destruction swept over me. The grave coiled its cord around me, and death set its trap before me. I was cut off from the land of the living, punished for the transgression of my people. I was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in death, though I committed no crime. O Lord, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Oh,